Portland to Rat Rod Television, your home for thrust, lust, and rust. We're going to take you on a journey into backyards and garages where junkabilly mechanics grab and fab their own cars from whatever they can find. There are no rules in the old school. You can win the brand new Lincoln Power MIG welder in the Rat Rod Build Competition. Throttle down, boys, and get ready for some hair-bending automotive entertainment. Let's go. I'm Miss Red, and welcome to another episode of Rat Rod TV. We're coming at you today from Steve Ramsdale's garage in Las Vegas, Nevada. Yep, still picking my way through the Rat Rod Underground in Sin City. Frank and wrenching with the boys. Nice garage, Steve. Clean shop's a safe shop, right? That's right. You like the new reality garage t-shirts? I do. You can order a few at ratrodtv.com. Makes a great gift. Strong language and part swapping. Now that's my kind of show, baby. Speaking of show, Rat Rod and Ricky found a sweet ride for your viewing pleasure. And after that, we're gonna drop it on the Essex Bill to see how the frame fab is going. Stick around until the end of the show when we reveal right. the next entry in the win to make competition and give away the crown deluxe. Let's get this party started and find out what Sparky found. Hi, I'm Cadillac Pat, and you're watching Rat Rod TV. Cadillac Pat from Palmdale. Tell us about your car, buddy. Well, what I got here, uh, 35 Chevy truck, cab. Uh, originally was a flatbed truck, commercial truck. Uh, what I did to it, got about four inches out of the body. Five and seven eighths out of the top. And it's marked right here, the, yep. the cut's marked up with a magic marker. That's pretty fun. That's it, yeah. Uh, Chevy trucks of this year, the whole inside of it was wood, so I had to replace all the wood in it. Uh, and basically, took the truck apart, used just the cab, the grill, and the headlights. Everything else on this thing I had to make, fabricate, come up with. <laughs> Where did you find the body? Uh, the body came out of Bell Gardens. Um, from the Pena family over there. Um, they're really good friends with uh, Dennis Roth, actually. This has got some history. Uh, a company called Cool Flame Welding. Uh, they've been in the hot rod biz for a while, and I uh, just happened to find this uh, on the recycler one day and uh, had to have it. So you picked it up. What about the motor? Tell us about this motor. This is some pretty wild stuff you got going on <laughs> up here, and this thing really moves. This is one fast rat. Yeah, it's, it's a pretty killer ride. Uh, the people ask me what it feels like to, to be in it. Uh, basically, it feels like a dirt bike on a gravel road. It's it's the scoots all over the place, burns all three gears. It's insane. And you have harnesses in your seats in here. I haven't seen many harnesses on the seats on a rat. Well, believe it or not, these are uh, Swiss Army backpacks that I modified. Uh, oh, is that right? Seats, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I just came up with something just cool and neat instead of race seats. Um, well, back to the engine. The uh, the engine, uh, 350 Chevy, small block. Uh, set up eight and a half to one compression, uh, pistons, rods, all the good hard parts in there. Uh, the turbo kit was actually a 70s era uh, Gale Banks kit for the small block. Uh, Ray J turbos, uh, Demon blow through carburetor, uh, homemade plenum, too cheap to buy one. Um, what else we got in here? <laughs> Twin turbocharged, and then we'll get around to the fuel situation in the back over there as soon as it... Tell us about the uh, the frame and the suspension down. Uh, frame was done by uh, me and my buddy Paul. Um, Z notched all the fun stuff. Um, we had to fabricate all that stuff to make it uh, happen. Um, got the friction shocks, make it look old, set up suicide style. Suspension is uh, Model A, front and back. Uh, pair of pins for, for the... Um, the rod up front and um, wheels 17s those are off some Dodge vehicle newer Dodge vehicle uh, the rear tires are uh, 20 inch wheels off of a Dodge truck did you drive this up from Palmdale I towed it I got a 46 in oh, it came on a trailer yeah. it came on a trailer hey, but it's a 46 <laughs> international but it's a 46 <laughs> international trailer right we'll be back with more of this week's feature ride Pretty interesting build, don't you think? <laughs> I'm just saying. Is there any more pizza left? There is. All right, go get me a piece. <laughs> Rat Rod TV is brought to you in part by... 
Rat Rod Television is brought to you by Lincoln Electric, the welding experts. Chicago Pneumatics, pull the trigger. Ray Vestas, the best in brakes. Seal the deal with Mr. Gaskin. By Monster Transmission, eat my shift. Cop cams, go faster. By Trailershopper.com, buy, sell, and trade. And by Summit Racing, the world's speed shop. Chicago Pneumatic is the official air tool of Rat Rod TV. Do you want to know why? They're built to work and they're built to last. You can pay more for other tools, but you're not going to get more. Chicago Pneumatic is the Rat Rodder's tool of choice. So fill your hand and feel the power. Check out the full line of Chicago Pneumatic products at cp.com slash rr. cp.com slash rr and pull the trigger on one of these babies. I'm Courtney Hansen, and you're watching Rat Rod TV. There's an interesting story behind this old Dodge here. More on that later. Right now, let's get back to our featured car. This will make your ratchet spin. Is this the uh, is this the original grill off the truck? Yeah, it's the original grill. Uh, I cut the hell out of it, and uh, I cut it so much that I had to move the radiator to the back of the vehicle. <laughs> yeah, we noticed there's no radiator in here. It's got some oil coolers up there. Um, headlights, original headlights. The uh, blinker lights are off some sort of military vehicle. <laughs> um, Corvair steering box. Old horn. Gauges to make sure everything's all good. MSD boxes. Uh, aeromotive pump. Regulator to keep all the gas and fuel set up right. This guy knows his car. <laughs> I also notice you have disc brakes here. Yeah, necessity. You needed the disc brakes because this thing gets to hauling and uh, it's, uh, you got to make it stop. So Let's check out the back over here. Tell us about these tanks back here. This is intriguing. Oh, uh, the tanks? <laughs> Everybody asked me about this one. The tanks come from an uh, Army surplus place back east. I, I believe it was uh, Omaha surplus. <laughs> um, they originally were uh, set up as practice bombs. Uh, they used to fill them up with either sand or water and drop them out of airplanes at targets and perfect candidate for a fuel tank for something like this. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, I was originally going to go propane power this whole thing and then make the propane tanks look like bombs, but this is a better... You're going to do propane, so you're going to do a green wrap. Yeah, I was... Uh, Earth-friendly I was, I was trying to, you know, dance the line between obnoxious and green. I went with obnoxious. Oh <laughs> it's always good to go with obnoxious. <laughs> yeah, they don't like it too much. Oh, we love it. So. <laughs> How much do you think you've got in it so far? Uh, mm, that's a tough one. I don't like to think about that stuff, but uh, that much, huh? In, uh, in reality, um, it, it was probably around five grand total. Five thousand. Yeah, yeah. So maybe, maybe even less. Maybe. Do you think it would bring on the open market or an auction? What do you think it's worth? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Some somebody could shoot me a figure, but I ain't gonna sell it. I'm giving this one to my wife. <laughs> It, it, it's pretty tough to put a price on these things, and people haven't been selling enough of them for anybody to build any kind of library or do sales comparables, so they're all one-offs, they're all one-of-a-kind. It's kind of hard to put prices on it, so if somebody really wanted it, they'd make you an offer you might swing with. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's, it's like a work of art, you know? You could look at it, and somebody behind you will look at it and value it totally different, you know? It, it really depends on the, the beholder, you know? it's. Something like this, you know, most normal people look at and go, ah, what the hell is this? But the people that know, the people that know these things, each little part, and this, this thing's a work of art. Everything that, that was put together was put together by me. They know. You know? Yeah, they know. They know what, what fabrication was involved, uh, what kind of time was involved, putting this, that, and the other thing together. And yeah, yeah, it's really hard to put a value well, on did. something like that. You did a great job. We like it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Patrick. <laughs> Calm down. Hi, I'm Cadillac Pat, and this is my ride.
I was out for some grab bag, jump to a jewel. Send us a photo of your build and you might see your car on TV. This is not the first time we shot in the SNS garage. We did a photo session here with Holly West. Here's a behind the scenes pin up, peekaboo short. I always loved hot rods when I was a kid. Um, I used to go to the Grand National Roads for show when it was in Oakland. So that was in my blood too. Always loved bikes, hot rods. Um, and just you really just shot it for a hobby, hobby most of you know the time. And then about seven years ago, um, I moved to LA um, um, and uh, started shooting pinups and hot rods just for fun. And um, got some work published, my first um, you know feature. And it really just kind of took off from there. I just realized how much I enjoyed it. And um, wow. Uh, well, like I said, I kind of started out real slow. In 2005, I got my first full feature and cover um, with Rod and Culture um, with Kim Falcon. And we shot um, a 57 Buick um, Oz that Oz Customs built. And that was my first big feature. And since then, I've, on that scale, I've, I've had a few, maybe 10 different features. Not always covers, but I really like that and I enjoy that. I think you really have to know how a woman photographs. Um, and I think, you know, having had experience, you know, behind the camera helps. Um, you just really have to know what, what's flattering to a woman and, um, you know, the, the right camera angles so they don't look distorted. And I think you just really have to take your time and look and, and pay attention. Um, and I think that helps. You know, um, Doing, doing a lot more pinup stuff. I think it'd be real, real fun to do that and also do some music industry work as well. So I hope to continue with that. This is the SS Garage, and you're watching Rap Raw TV. Hey everyone, Joe Gibbs here. When it comes to the number 18, 20, and 11 Toyotas at Joe Gibbs Racing, we're constantly testing parts, developing new technologies, looking for every advantage. For brakes, only one line has been a proven winner time and again, Raybestos. For quiet, safe, worry-free performance with full line domestic and foreign nameplate coverage, trust Raybestos, the official brakes of NASCAR. High performance for life with MLS head gaskets from Mr. Gasket. Engineered for high compression, turbo, supercharged, and nitrous engines. MLS is the multi-layer leak-proof answer guaranteed to seal in performance. Lockments. Lock it in for life with MLS from Mr. Gasket. XL, the GMHEI corrected distributor cap. Eliminate crossed ignition wires and dress up your engine for a clean look. A plug and play fit with ultra high dielectric strength to resist arc through. The GMHEI corrected distributor cap. New from XL. This segment of Rat Rod TV is brought to you by KillBillet.com. Week three of Essex Build is coming up next, and it's getting very dicey. I think they have about $1,200 to finish the car. You think they'll make it? No. 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 Adrian's making tremendous progress on the train. The 2x4 box frame pieces were cut according to Adrian's computer design. The ends were ground to expose a clean welding surface. The main frame rails were aligned and tacked to the jig table to hold the rails in place. The cross members were measured and cut to fit. Summit Steel sent us the metal, we cut it up, we did the precision cuts. Adrian's joint of choice on this project was the TIG. I'm tack welding everything right now, just to make sure everything is straightened out. Once the main frame assembly was complete, the rear end, swing arm, and bag brackets were fabricated and welded into place. Welded it together, mysteriously Adrian cut it in half. The next day it was welded together. What are you doing here, Adrian? I have to move the frame rails so that they go tilt, they tilt in more so that the bag will fit underneath it. Mm. So you've made a change? Yeah. When did this like happen? Always. It's always happening. Stop pointing that thing. 
double compound. We have to cut this back a little bit. No, so we kick it on the 45? On this? Yeah. It won't work. It won't work. You got the computer. Look at the ah! computer. I just need to find somewhere that looks decent that you can put a kink in it. Why does it come out like, like four inches? Yeah, it could be back here, it could be up here, it doesn't matter. You want to plug it up? Just got to find a good spot there. Let's do it up, let's do it up in the front. So when we get up there, it'll pop it out. And this will hold its form like we got it already cut out of the inside of the car. Two days later, we were working on it again. He cut it in half again, then he welded it back together. Oh, it changes it. It won't even fit right now anyway. We'd have to lay it up like this. And that's what I'm saying. They kick it. You see what I'm saying? With the same arc. And they kick it on that angle on that piece. What do you think? It will fit. Chin. And then uh, we went ahead and we wanted to taper the front. We cut that thing in half again. And then we welded it back together. I think he just needed something to weld on. We should have been working on something else and we had plenty to do, but uh, who knows what's in that kid's mind. He's got a lot going on in there. <laughs> so why, why did we cut this frame in half again? It's cost efficient. We're trying to keep the cost down. Price is still up, so instead of just taking and... We want to get... Making it extra long, we figured we'd make it long and then chop it shorter. We're going the opposite direction. That's cool. If we did it the other way, that would not be cool. Right? The frame is in one piece. Look at it. One. One. Half again. Half again. Half again. We change our mind. Because you know why? Because I am your editing nightmare. <laughs> Lift it in like a slipper, down in the top, set it in there. All right. The frame was ready to install and refine as necessary. The frame fed according to plan and we locked up the cutting wheels, just in case Adrian got a wild hair and decided to make another change. Further refinements were made with the new Lincoln Tomahawk plasma cutters. Fit perfect, everything fits good. The rear suspension set in it, radius the back to get it to set in. Uh, went and picked us up some front tires, made a big change there. Put the axle together with those, set that up. Now we're gonna put everything on the front end, back on the car, take the car off the jig stand, get it on the floor, get the ride height set, channel the body over it. Probably the next time you guys see it, the body's gonna be attached to the frame. If you want to see this segment again, go to ratrodtv.com. Click on the Rat Rod Garage. We'll be posting the Essex Build segments every week. While you're there, get yourself one of these new stylish reality garage tees. When we come back, Steve's gonna tell us where he found this rusty old Dodge back here. trailer for my motorcycle and was about to go out looking for one when I realized I gotta sell my old one. Good thing I found TrailerShopper.com. I can do both at the same time right from home. At TrailerShopper.com I can shop for a livestock trailer if I needed one, a race car, snowmobile, cargo, or even a horse trailer. Trust me, if you're looking to buy or sell any kind of trailer, new or used, you can do it at TrailerShopper.com. And sellers, your first classified ad is free. Even free one ads. TrailerShopper.com. 
the inspiration for the show. Rat Rod Ricky, founded at a local car show, and decided it was interesting enough to produce a whole series. So this is your fault, huh? So Steve, tell me where you got this old rusty bucket. Well, I was driving through Nebraska and I seen this car in the field. So I went up and I asked the farmer he wanted to sell it. And uh, I had 50 bucks in my pocket, so I told him, you know, I got, I got 50 bucks, that wasn't enough, so. I said, hey, I got this sister too, and I'll throw that in, a, in on the deal. And then uh, he, he, he agreed with this, so I brought it home, and here it is. Sweet, 50 bucks and a sister, all for this car. Do you have no shame? Not when it comes to cars. So Steve, how much do you think you got in this thing? Well, I got 50 bucks plus my sister in, into the car. I got about uh, $100 in the motor I got from a friend of mine. Paid 50 bucks uh, for the tranny out of the newspaper. Mm -hmm. I paid about 200 for the front end, again, from a friend of mine, and just little pieces and parts, so maybe 1200 with the whole car. Wow, that is a deal. Steve, thanks for having us in your garage today. Keep up the good work. Thank you. Now let's join Rat Rod Ricky in the Rat Rod Garage to reveal this week's entry in the Lincoln Winnemig competition. Over to you, Sparky. Thanks, Red. How about those Rat Rod TV t-shirts, huh? Get yours today at ratrodtv.com. Well, the judges couldn't resist this week's entry to win the Lincoln Power MIG welder. His name is Jordan Barlow. He's from Waterton, South Dakota, and he built this 1931 Model A. Pretty sweet for a 15-year-old kid. He got the body for his 13th birthday for 100 bucks. He got a 4-inch drop front axle with disc brakes from Speedway for $1,200. The rear end is out of an old police car. He picked up a couple of dirt track rims and hung them on the rear. The airbags were 100 bucks. It's powered by a 350 Chevy with a turbo 350 tranny. It's cooled by a custom-made radiator for $250. The seats are out of a Corvette, and the steering column is a 65 Cadillac telescopic tilt. Now, with a little help from his dad, all told, Jordan has about five grand in the car. What were you doing when you were 15? Well, nice job on the car, Jordan. You're in the running to win the Lincoln Power MIG welder. We're going to send you the Cruise and Sticks welding helmet absolutely free. Congratulations to Rat Rod Magazine. They made a distribution deal, and now they're going to be on the magazine racks around the planet. Steve is doing a great job to promote the culture. You can check it out at the Rat Rod Magazine link on ratrodtv.com. We're thinking of adding a new feature to the show called Dancing with the Cars. Chip Foose, Dancing with a Woody. Courtney Hansen dancing with a pink 59 caddy. <laughs> We're looking for ratings. Good idea or bad idea, let us know at ratrodtv.com. We're getting some really interesting builds to win this Lincoln Power MIG. This one comes from Mark Main. He sent us a few photos of his recent builds. Look at this 28 Chevy Roadster. When he found it, it was in the woods. It was a one-ton farm truck. His cousin gave him the motor and transmission. He found matching carbs and made the intake and header with bicycle chain linkage. Mark made the windshield frame dash seats and twin stick shifter. Try saying that twice. The gas tank is an old air compressor and the overflow setup came from a David Bradley walk behind tractor. <laughs> Talk about grab and fab. Mark is currently turning a 1930s Dodge Woody into a two door sedan. Can't wait to see that one. Good job on the cars, Mark. The Crown Deluxe sunglasses are for you. Of course, they might not be this exact color. The new Reality Garage tees are available at ratrodtv.com. Quantities are limited. Order yours today. Remember, you can also follow us on Twitter. And please don't drink and drive. All the alcoholic beverages consumed on the show today were simulated. That's why this show is rated R. We'll see you down the road. Rat Rod Television is brought to you by Lincoln Electric, the welding experts. Chicago Pneumatics, pull the trigger. Ray Vestas, the best in brakes. Seal the deal with Mr. Gaskin. By Monster Transmission, eat my shift. Comp cams, go faster. By Trailershopper.com, buy, sell, and trade. And by Summit Racing, the world's speed shop. While you're there, get yourself one of these new... <laughs>
the end of the show when we review it. When we, uh, Action. Nice scratch, Steve. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Are we starting from the top? No. no. Okay. Yeah, you're good. Okay. You just, you just, just feel feel feet. Feet. <laughs> you're good. You're just showing it, right? Okay, take it. Rolling. Yep. <laughs> Jill stuck in Las Vegas. Nope. High performance for life with MLS head gaskets from Mr. Gasket. Engineered for high compression, turbo, supercharged, and nitrous engines. MLS is the multi-layered leak-proof answer guaranteed to seal in performance. Lock, performance. Lock it in for life with MLS from Mr. Gasket. XL, the GMHEI corrected distributor cap. Eliminate crossed ignition wires and dress up your engine for a clean look. A plug and play fit with ultra high dielectric strength to resist arc through. The GMHEI, GMHEI corrected distributor cap. New from XL. You've got the ride. Now get the edge at summitracing.com. Find parts fast with customizable search options. Shop by keyword, brand name, make, model, and more. Plus, find great deals in the Saving Central section. Get parts quick and easy with online checkout and fast shipping. And get the job done right with helpful instruction sheets, part suggestions, and a huge tech, huge tech archive. It's all at summitracing.com, your ultimate power tool.